know it's been a while, but let's go ahead and set up. In this video, I'll be trying my hand on my first ever clay sculpture. I'll be going from the very beginning from the setup as you see here to the tools and clays I'll be using. If you just want to jump directly into the sculpting, the timestamp will be here and in the description box below. Let's get started. Boom, this is chaotic. Cool. So what is in here is exactly what I thought it was, plus... All right, there's a lot that's about to happen. I got some armature wire, point two. I got my pasta maker, boom. This is the pasta maker. I got Home Noodle Machine by Wendy Bao. I saw this on another YouTuber or right here. Um, we got ourselves, we got some original Sculpey. Um, I actually have about eight pounds of it. To bulk things up, I got good old aluminum, uh, aluminum foil. I actually got Super Sculpey. Got two of them. So that's two pounds. I don't think it focuses. We got liquid Sculpey, up and bake adhesive, gloss glaze, and then a whole bunch of sculpting tools. I have never sculpted nor have I done a sculpting before. Anyways, so pasta maker, boom bam. This thing is heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Well, I guess it does have to be heavy because it's definitely for pasta. Oh, word. If I don't mess this up. I was gonna hurt myself, to be honest. This is the cutter, if I want it to cut, which I'm not going to, so I don't really even need to use this. Back in the box this goes. Oh, here's the thickness setting. Hmm, one more thing. I need to grab my cutting board. Yeah. Now we'll say this stuff. I don't want to put too much pressure on the pasta roller. Let's go to the thickest one real quick. Ah, I see why they tell about the table clamp. I decided to test out the pasta maker by simply running some clay through it a few times at various thickness settings. I see why it comes with that table clamp to hold this in place because right now I'm like clamping on top of this and I think it's like counterproductive me doing that because like I'm doing one of these numbers. Yeah, I guess I could put it here. It would work. I have all these tools here. I have all these tools here. I have zero idea what they do. So. I kind of just want to we're just going to time lapse me doing something with each one of these tools because it's going to be a hot minute. I tested all these tools and I'm not gonna lie to you, I have no idea what they do. I have my sketch in here. Armature wire. Shout out to Josh. Josh, thank you. See if this works. Oh. And for those that did not skip to this timestamp, welcome. And for those that did, let's get started. So we began creating the stem of the rose by grabbing some armature wire and to bulk things up, I grabbed some aluminum, aluminum foil and wrapped it around. After that, I used my pasta maker to roll out some super sculpty clay on the thickest setting dowel, number six, to create the outermost layer. At first, I wasn't gonna purchase the pasta maker because I thought I could just do everything by hand, but I'm glad I did because it took me about 10 minutes of rolling it a few times to get the right thickness and texture and working the clay and I honestly could imagine doing this all by hand. I wanted to make sure that the clay was on the thickest setting to cover the entire aluminum foil because I did not want to have any exposed parts. Next, I grabbed this weird rolling tool thingy that looked like something from a manicure set and I used it for two things. The first, to get rid of fingerprints. And the second, to make the stem as flat and uniform as possible by making the foil underneath the clay flat. And when that didn't do what I wanted, I went foraging into the piles of other tools to see if anything would flatten the stem out. I grabbed what looked like a flat tip screwdriver 
and followed by what I assume was a palette knife, and that's when it dawned on me, simple problem, have a simple solution. Just roll it on the cutting board. Now pause. For those that didn't skip and notice my cutting board swap, when I was messing around with the clay in the beginning and I was attempting to work with it, the cutting board was textured, so when I was rolling around and working the clay, it created this weird texture, and I just wanted to make it smooth. Had to address the continuity thing. Oh, I threw a jacket on, by the way. Unpause. I decided to bend the top of the stem because I thought it was going to help the flower bulk out a little bit more and in my opinion give it a little bit more natural look. Honestly, it was just because I didn't know what I was doing. They made this look easy. We got the stem right now, so we got to bake it. This is for a super sculpt. Okay, after the stem was baked at 275 degrees Fahrenheit and cooled down enough to handle it, it was time to make the petals. I started the first petal about the size of a jawbreaker and then I used ball stylus to smooth it to the stem. The size of the first petal looked pretty good and proportionate and so I decided to just stick with that formula for the rest of the petals and I increased them just a little bit more as I decided to go outwards. So the outer petal was probably about the size of half my palm. But the rest I just ripped up into about jawbreaker size and shaped them into petals. I didn't want you to watch me create the same petal over and over again, so I sped things up a bit, but the process was all the same. We got our jawbreaker size clay and shaped them like a petal and repeat the process until you have all your petals that have been created and you are happy with the size and shapes of them. And this honestly comes down to whatever size you were going to make, but this is what I prefer to do. And now it was time to create the rose. I used a Google photo of a yellow rose for my reference to help with the shaping of the flyer. I personally found it easier to go from the inside of the rose and work my way out, shaping the rose until I thought it looked good. This did take a lot longer and I know I keep saying this, but this truly took me a long time. Now that being said, I know that flowers are very delicate and a rose by any of the names is just as sweet. But wow, I had to reshape this so many times because I kept shaping. I kept messing up the shape. I kept going back and looking at it and like this looked good but then I would mess up the outermost one and then I kept adding another one and another one and I was happy with where it was at kind of sort of but now it was time to add the veins or the texture and I grabbed the tool that kind of looked like a rake and I went along the petals on the inside of them and then the outside as well to the best of my ability to add that I guess realism and again to smooth the stem and the bottom of the petal out I grabbed the ball stylus and this pipe tool looking thing and I rolled it until they were blended. After looking at the rose, I thought I should use a little bit more clay so I opened up this clay I got from Amazon which was sergeant clay and I wanted to use all the tools at my disposal so I saw Jess I had a pottery video and he used this weird wire cutting thing to cut the clay but it just wasn't working for me so I just ripped a piece off the old block and I did the same as before. I worked the clay and worked it again and worked it again and got my forearm work out and I worked it a little bit more before I ran this chunk through my pasta maker on the thickest setting not to break my pasta maker. Worked the clay <laughs> even more, broke a sweat, and until it became friends with me we began shaping another petal. That looks pretty good. Now for the outermost petal. This is where my skepticism was kicking in, especially with this being two different types of clays. I didn't know if they were going to play well if both brands are going to work together but it kind of seemed like it did and so then I had to reshape the petal over again and things I needed to work out the last bit of petals I ran into the issue of resting the, the rows and it flattened a bit and the petals were not baked so they are still malleable so I had a lot of fingerprints to work out I tried my best to smooth things out with that manicure tool from earlier and if you're wanting to know what I'm doing here besides working the last bit of the couple of the petals out I needed to find out what baking temp and time was for the sergeant clay because it was not on the packaging, which I thought was odd. But I did find out it was 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes. Don't mind me, just constantly continuing working this clay out. And I was on the last petal and I started to wrap things up but then I realized it was a bit too big so I went with the scalpel tool and cut the clay in half and fixed it to the rose to what I thought would have been a pretty decent size for the outermost petal. But after seeing it on the rose I decided to cut that petal in half again. 
and then it looked a little bit better honestly now it was just time to adjust the sizing and i wasn't a fan of this clay in particular due to the tearing i noticed on the pedals that was happening now this is more than likely user error so i won't just count the clay quite yet and only future projects will tell but at this point the rose just seemed off so off screen i used the other half of that previously cut clay to make a couple more pedals to, that was to my liking and mirrored my reference and now I'm pretty much just doing the same thing as before, adjusting the pedals to make it look better. And if you're doing this, it's honestly whatever size you want your rose to be. Like I want something a little bit more natural size or the best I can. And if you look on the pedals right here on the bottom left and after I move around, you sh will see the tearing that I was talking about earlier, right about here, you see that? Mm. But for the final details, I grabbed this uh, little shovel tool and I started smoothing the, the bottom out creating the veins on the outside of the rose and I grabbed the manicure tool again to smooth things out and hopefully blend things just a little bit better and honestly I have zero idea if this is even the correct thing to do I'm just winging it now Sean didn't you say that this is the last pedal yes but didn't I also say that this wasn't perfect I grabbed a little bit of clay to create one more pedal Add a little textures to it before we go ahead and bake it. And now that it has baked and completely cooled down, the paints I used were both Folk Art and Apple Barrel, and I got mine at Walmart in the craft section. The color you're seeing now is the Folk Art Metallic Royal Gold. I wanted to add as the base layer, that way it had that shine. Which, look at this, it looks beautiful right now, right? Like nothing can go wrong. Look at that, and the nice little details, give that little shine. Mmm, look at that. I've seen, but you don't want those problems. Perfect. At the words for the first highlight, I used Apple Barrel Bright Yellow to add depth. And if you're wondering why half of that rose is flat, it is because, dear viewer, when I was baking, I set it on its side. Sad, but I want my rose personally to be able to lay down, which is what I achieved. Um, Honestly... I would recommend you baking just the flour and then uh, attaching it to the stem. And also, honestly, my final and not my best decision was adding the apple barrel yellow flame. I was aiming for a little less opaque layer that came down to me not watering down enough. And it worked for the inside of the rose, but on the outside I should just have left it alone or attempted maybe like a blend or something. Because it looks good right here, but the outside was not my favorite. This has texture and depth, but the outside of it just kind of honestly fell flat and looked a little bit flat so if you're going to be painting do better than me the stem i was going to do is green but honestly i just got too lazy and i did a yellow to complete the entirety of the yellow rose and in better lighting we can see the textures in the paint and now for the reveal cue the poor man's lazy susan There are a lot of things I learned from this sculpture. One, I underestimated how long this truly takes. I think after all the filming, it was well over three hours and painting probably like another hour. Two, I noticed so many fingerprints that I didn't notice until it was baked. I did look up some ways to rid of fingerprints and there was um, a way with the rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, I believe. I'll have to try it. Another one is with the actual clay fingerprint removal. Three, I have to let paint dry. And this is even my biggest enemy with canvases because I just want to keep working on it. And four, I need to know when to leave good enough alone. As I've been talking and you were watching, yes, I went back and continued painting the stem once again because I thought I could do something else, but I did nothing but lose paint and time. The highlights on the pedals were a nice touch though. I truly hope you enjoyed the video, and I know it's been a long time since the video came out and I'm trying to get back on track, but... Until the next time, in the next one, peace, love, and hot sauce, and as always, thanks for watching.